Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Trace video and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 23 and today we are starting our Moto E career mode. It is time for round one here in Le Mans and we will be starting from pole position. Eight rounds of Moto E begins now. It's a dash for the cash in the electric era. So here we go then from pole position and their engines are ready to burst into life for round one. Here in Le Mans, and that's a pretty good start, if I do say so myself. So with us having no fuel to worry about in this particular career mode, I'm going to go full power setting three to the moon. And hopefully not back. Never been a fan of that song. But anyway, <laughs> back to the point. So we're up by seven tenths of a second going into the Dunlop chicane. This is looking absolutely brilliant. We had the pole position by about half a second. But in the free practice and then in the qualifying, they had me working for that qualifying position. And I was a little bit concerned I'd be starting from further back, but I managed to just produce a really solid lap time in the latter stages. So I'm, I'm really surprised at the start we've had it. I definitely expected Matteo Ferrari and possibly Jordi Torres to be right up there battling us uh, for the victory here in Le Mans. But of course, uh, two effectively two sprint races here in uh, Le Mans. Of course, compared to the full MotoGP 23 career mode, we'll be doing 50% races. Here in Moto E, these are 100% races. It's just that the only diff difference there is that uh, the Moto E laps don't very uh, don't uh, last very long. So there's uh, 8 or 10 laps at most on each of the circuits. And going into Shimano Buff, something has happened behind there because Jordi Torres and Matteo Ferrari exchanged position and they then lost about a second going into that left-hander a moment ago. So I don't know what's just happened behind us, but we now have a commanding lead here in Le Mans for the debut in the Moto E Cup, the Moto E Championship, as we go a bit deep into recording on. And now onto the power and across the line. We are looking rather swell with a two and a half second advantage. It's fantastic. Of course, only able and eligible to do the Ducati Moto E Cup since I moved across in MotoGP career mode. It's not quite how it works, but I just thought it'd keep it for the somewhat realism and immersion of the videos as we now have a 3.6 seconds what's going on I, I think this is a great time to remind you that this is on 120 percent difficulty this is the maximum difficulty in the game and yet we are four seconds clear from the competition now this happens a lot actually in motor gp 23 i do find that sometimes uh, one or the other is the riders stronger so in Qualifying, they're usually weaker than they are in free practice. In sprints, they're usually weaker than they are than the race. So I wonder if this is how it's going to work with this video here today. I wonder if the AI are going to be a little bit slower in the sprint and then really go for it in race two, which will not be too long away. And of course, guys, if you are enjoying the video and you're enjoying the electric-powered Ducatis, then be sure to let me know in the comments section down below. And of course, hit the like and subscribe as well. It certainly helps out the channel, and it helps, certainly helps me grow as well. But anyway, five seconds it is. This has been <laughs> rather surprising. I cannot believe how quickly we've adapted to the Moto E machines. Because we had the world record not long ago, beaten by Flavio Baldacci, the uh, eSports Rising Stars, a part of the Moto E version of eSports. I can't remember what it's called. Is it Rising Stars? I think that's what it's called. Apologies, Flavio, if you are watching. But uh, yeah, across the line there, 138, uh, 139, 368, so rather competitive in the early stages here in Le Mans. Now I did notice that playing this game with the likes of Trash Control reduced, or increased should I say, rather than reduced, uh, the, the bikes don't move very well. You do take a bit of punishment to the rear tyre, you also have to be extremely soft and gentle with the acceleration, otherwise you are launching yourself off the machine and sending yourself into oblivion. But I gotta say, Trash Control 1, it, it feels loose, but my god, it's fast. It is rapid around here in Le Mans. I will tell you, I tried another track in free practice a couple of days ago before preparing for this career mode video. And the AI were absolutely bonkers quick. They were ridiculous. They were almost to the point of the Saxon Ring AI at 120%. So I am keen to see what that's going to be like when we get there. But uh, for now, I am going to embrace the challenge or that lack thereof here in Le Mans 
right now. But a 7.2, now 7.3 second advantage. We're looking rather content, aren't we? We are looking wonderful as the Ferris wheel rotates round and round here in Le Mans. As we now have an 8 second advantage to the very first Moto E Cup winner. I think it changed now. I do believe it is classed as an official world championship. Of course, uh, the Moto E World Cup was the name of the uh, first couple of years before it reached that legendary status. Now, I did go for the Pramac Prettle Ducati team, and to be honest, I was... I already had this idea of doing this career mode before signing with the Ducati team. I knew I'd get a Ducati seat, I just didn't know which one it would be. I was convinced it would be the Pramac Ducati team in MotoGP career mode, and that's why I went for this particular Pramac Ducati. It made sense, because it would be the same team, more or less. But surprisingly, um, yeah, we, we didn't. We went straight to the factory Ducati, we gave Pekko Bagnaia to his keys and said, right, lock up, mate, because you're not coming back. <laughs> hand in your badge, hand in your gun. It's like an old film where the police officer is <laughs> sacked from his job. I can't believe Pekko Bagnaia got sent as I got a massive voice crack then. Clip that for the for the aces, ladies and gentlemen. As we now go into Garage Vert, nine seconds clear from Matteo Ferrari. This is an absolute dominant showing. However... Those soft tyres, they feel terrific, but they look like that's going to be the wrong choice. Oh, goodness me, wide into turn 9, and then into turn 10, respectively. Not very good, going into the uh, right and left hander sharp. So into the blue S's, we have a commanding lead. I've now three tenths of a second deviation though. Of course, making that small mistake a moment ago that did cost us from any chance of improving, but we didn't lose too much time. I, I hope I do stay in those 139s across the line, and it is indeed a 139.901. I don't know what it is about my lap times recently, but I'm getting a lot of 0.01s. It seems to happen a lot. Every single time I improve my lap time in SoCo, it was always a 0.01. And here it is again. Another 0 0.01, or point something 0 0.01, should I say. So on to the left-hand side. This is La Chapelle, the right-hander here in Le Mans. Keeping it nice and tight to the apex. A bit too tight there, as a matter of fact. We're cutting across the curb. As we escape the sixth corner, we now go into Muse. Onto the brakes. Keep it in. Ooh, a bit of a slip there on the rear tyre. We're beginning to lose some traction in the midpoint of this race, I guess. A little bit, but... Not too much. The front is getting a bit warm as we now go onto the brakes for Garage Vert. Keep it in tight if you can. A little bit deeper, that's okay. Follow the lines of the circuit. And then onto the power. I can't tell you how easy it is though just to go full throttle and end up launching yourself off the motorcycle. Not quite uh, full throttle from uh, Tim Shaper's game, but full throttle in the sense of going absolutely gung-ho with the motorcycle as we now go into turn 10 onto the power. Again, be gentle. Don't need to go too aggressive. And I don't need to try and mess about when we have a 11 second going on to 12 second advantage. Eric Granado is now onto the podium positions. He's up there in third. The LCR uh, Ducati V21L, I think that's what the name of the bike is. Matteo Ferrari off the podium. Zanoni in fifth. Uh, Spinelli six. Pons and Cassade, the actual Moto E world champion, down there in eighth. And look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Identical lap times for your uh, content creator today. 139.901. I told you about those 01s, didn't I? I warned you. <laughs> I told you it happens. And into turn three then. 12 second advantage. A bit tight to the apex there. Oh, there it is. Oh, right on cue. Are we going to... Do we still have the lead? Look at the rear tyre now. Lord almighty. It was a Le Mans masterclass, but I guess it has its has its moment. Down by seven seconds end to jo well, Jordi Torres is seven seconds behind. I think we're all right, but wow. That went more or less without warning. I was on the power just as we got onto the right hand side there. Little little bit of a moment. And then yeah, as we started to accelerate, the bike just screamed at me. I guess that's the funny thing about the Moto E and those uh, engine noises. Is the way the bike screams when it protests that it wants absolutely no more. 
can't see any particular <laughs> Oh my god, I'm not paying attention. I can't see any particular damage to the, the catty, but... I think it's alright, because there's no winglets or anything for it to actually lose compared to the aero of MotoGP 23... Uh, MotoGP Class and MotoGP 23, of course, but... I think... Everything's alright. I, I think we're gonna manage. <laughs> well, that was a scary moment, I won't lie. I mean, we lost a lot of time there. I know I feared that I'd probably drop into the 140s at some point, and I wanted to keep in the 139s. Well, this lap time is going to be a 145, isn't it? What is it across the line? It is a 146.2. That is bedlam. Shocking lap time. Hope you guys have got your beverages of choice here today, and I hope you didn't spit it out at that moment. I have my LucasAid energy with me. Good old British energy. Let's go. <laughs> Tight to the apex again, really taking liberties. In the latter stages of Le Mans. Fan a lot of fans in attendance for this Moto E race. And of course it doesn't usually get this much fanfare. For when uh, Moto E comes to the scene. But I'm pleased. So of course all these races are done on a Saturday. At the, uh, after the qualifying is completed. Well the first race is before Moto GP qualifying. And then the last race is just after Moto GP qualifying. If I'm not mistaken. It's again on the power. Just eager. I don't think I'm being any more aggressive. I think it's just that the temperature is rising for the rear tyre and it's getting really slippery. One second down. 1.2. Just gauging the gap here. I don't think we need to concern ourselves. No, we, we, we'd have to be losing a lot more time than that. But we have lost time on this lap to Jordi Torres. And now we're deep again into Shimano Buff. I didn't see any damage to the Ducati, but it is beginning to struggle to move in a bit. I would probably put that down to the tyres and the lack of grip. But I still at the same time feel like maybe there's something else that's just holding us back here. In the latter stage of race one. Onto the power then just gently into turn 13. Bike is wobbling a bit, isn't it? It, it seems to be just rocking around a bit like a player who doesn't have quite got the... The analog stick control. They're doing the old push and pull technology, old technique of pushing the analog, analog stick around as we go into Dunlop Chicane. Hard on the brakes, bring it in nice and tight. Nicely done for three. Can we do it again for four? We certainly can. Looking much better now. Significantly better than those past two lap times. Two more moments of feeling of weakness on the bike, those little moments of turning in. Rear tyre slipping ever so slightly. Felt alright there though, to be honest. It, it does feel a bit loose on the front, but I, I've got to say, I mean, I said it in the in the testing video I did in, um, was it Catalonia? Yeah, the, the front end, it feels amazing. On these bikes that you can hit the brakes so hard, and it doesn't want to drop. I trust the Ducati V21L. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. I, th I think that's what it's called. I I'd have to check it out before race two. But with seven seconds advantage, this has been a dominant performance. A Le Mans masterclass for the French aces. Shout out to Max B if he's watching. He's French. I don't know if we have any other French riders in uh, the Ace Academy server, do we? Not off the top of my head. Hopefully there is, and uh, hopefully they'll reveal themselves. Got to get a French connection for the next next Ace Academy Cup, perhaps. Going into turn 12... We are just two corners away from being a first-time victory in Moto E. Onto the right-hand side for 13, then into Recordamon. Onto the power. Do we get a wheelie for the aces? You betcha. It's not the biggest of wheelies, but it'll do for me. We are a Moto E winner. So there is the confirmation on your screen. Fastest man on track, fastest lap time, and of course, a victory in round one of Le Mans, in race one of Le Mans, round one of the Moto E career mode. So guys and girls, the championship standings is pretty much identical. So let's move on to race two. So here we go again then guys and girls, pretty solid job in the first race. So let's wait for the uh, bikes to burst into life and away we go. Okay, instantly, this is what I was saying earlier that the, I thought it could be a little bit different. I had a wheelie off the line. And here goes Matteo Ferrari, Jordi Torres, but wow, we are faster around the outside there. Is that just power setting three? Are they using power setting two? They were really slow off the line. But we don't have that same advantage. The gap is two tenths, three tenths. Surely it's not going to be another masterclass. 
Dr. Ace 101, how to tackle Moto E. Oh, hang on. Maybe it's not. Jordi Torres then. Moto E World Cup winner as well. Two tenths of a second is the gap. No, yeah, this is definitely different. Look him. Wow. This is completely different. It's like they were on something else on the first race. They, they just didn't have anything. Did they not have any grip? Did they not have any fuel? Well, they don't have fuel, but you know what I mean? Did they not use Power City 3? We have a race on our hands, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. I am pleased. I was really worried that uh, it would be a double washout victory with just dominating. But a four tenths of a second, five tenths of a second as we go into Shimano buff. Are they able to catch us up now? They definitely lose time into turn nine. They really do. They also do that in the GP. They do go very slow into the left-hander. But now into this right-hander for turn 11. This is the blue S. Five tenths of a second is the gap to Ferrari. Spinelli in third, the number 29. Torres, 81 in fourth. Cassade, the Moto E world champion. Followed by Hector Gartho, Mika Pereth and Eric Granado. In fact, them two have just swapped places. Or have they just swapped places? I, I think they've been swapping and changing positions over the past couple of corners there. I've been definitely seeing something going on for seventh and eighth. But even though the AI was giving us a bit of a tough time a moment ago, I think we've a been able to pull the pin. I think we might get away from the riffraff and hopefully secure some important championship points. Mikel Pons 77 is now given into the fight. In fact, no, he's actually, yeah, he's, he's got involved. He's up to seventh now. He's up to fifth. Look at that all of a sudden. He, he, he was out of the top ten a moment ago. That's marvellous. The man on the LCR Ducati. Krumanaka is now up into the top eight. Hector Gartho up to sixth. Cassidy into seventh. Eric Granado going backwards in the last, in the early stage of this race. No idea what is going on with race two, but I have gone deep into garage there. Ooh. Do we still have the advantage? We lost a whole second, it seems, on that. Matteo Ferrari is closing in, but they lose a lot of time on this straight, don't they? My goodness. Where's all that lap time? Where's all that time coming from? Where's the gap coming from? That's huge. I, I've got very distracted. Matteo Ferrari, he was within half a second. He then lost it. It was down to 1.2. And now it's even down to 6 tenths. What is going on with the AI in this one? Can't really see much from where I am right now. And I tell you what, what a start. What a start to Moto E career mode. And as I say, there's only going to be eight races. Eight different venues for us to tackle so eight videos in theory and you gotta say starting off strong here is exactly what we needed to do we're going to be doing 16 races in total two of them already taken care of now or at least one and a couple of bits a couple of laps in i gotta say i'm feeling really positive with the moto e machines when i first originally did the video with moto e i think i think it was really difficult in mazano but I was using trash control on quite high. I don't know what number I was using, but I believe it was on higher. It was certainly higher than TCS1, I can guarantee that. I've only recently changed over to TCS1 for MotoGP, and it has helped significantly. I feel significantly quicker with way more control and feeling. That is the key to getting better to MotoGP 23, rhyming accidentally. As we now go into Garage Vet. Let's see what getting it right does to the lap time. Oh, look at that. Four tenths of a second to be found just by avoiding the mistake into the eighth corner. Magnificent here in Le Mans. Beautiful sunny sky. Good to see because I don't know how the rainy weather would cope in this one. The conditions are on random if I'm not mistaken. So I don't know what's going to happen, but I couldn't see a variable option. So I don't believe there is a flag to flag for Moto E, which makes sense. But I also don't believe there's a flag to flag to red flag the race, if that makes sense. So as far as I'm concerned, I don't think there's any variable weather with the Moto E's. I better take a look at that, but I definitely didn't see that option. So across the line then, it's a... Th oh my god, what a lap time! That's a 39.001, which if I'm not mistaken was significantly faster than my qualifying lap time. Finding speed and lap number three after making that terrible start with a 141.68 after going wide into garage vert, we are now looking at something completely different. I do believe that is very close to being better, if not better, 
than my pole position lap time. I'm sure my lap time was a 39 something. 39, it was definitely under the one. It was definitely under a tenth. So I think that's a new fast slap for me. But now, being that close to the next increment of second, I've got to go for it. But bear in mind, okay, let, let's think about this wisely now. Let's think about this logically. We made a mistake. We made another mistake actually going into Garage Vet. That wasn't quite as clean as I like. I mean, out though, uh, yeah, okay. Four tenths of a second, it's not not bad. It's going to be more or less where the race pace was in the first race. But for race one, we did end up making a mistake on lap number six. Going into the Dunlop chicane. Now in that one, we lost about seven seconds. I can't afford to lose seven seconds this time. The gap is totally different. I can't believe the difference a race makes. Both races were recorded and are being recorded, whatever you want to say, on 120% difficulty. So, I don't understand why they were so bad in the first race. I do wonder if that will be a theme. I wonder, let's say, into the next round, for example, are we then going to see only maybe race one they're competitive or race two they're competitive? I am not sure. I don't actually remember the Moto E calendar very much. I've got uh, quite a lot going on at the moment, so I don't really remember which one it was, but I'm pretty certain the next venue would be Magello. So when we get to that, I am hoping that the AI gives it its all. But if it's anything like the Moto GP career mode video last season with the KTM, that was absolutely, utterly bonkers. Carnage and catastrophes everywhere in the Tuscan Hills of Mugello. I very much expect it to be similar. I just don't know how it, if it will. It, it can't be as bad with Jack Miller taking out Takaka Nakagami, uh, Augusto Fernandez, Paulus Sparger and Taka on the front row. That was bonkers. And I don't know if I've uploaded the video yet. I guess not in my mode of GP23 career mode, but... <laughs> I don't know what to say without spoiling it, but... Just take a look at where Enea Bassini qualifies in a race in a couple of days' time. <laughs> just... You'll see it. You'll just, you'll see it. <laughs> it's a bit strange, I'll tell you this for free. I'll tell you that. It's, uh, it's a bit bonkers. But uh, enough about the factory Ducati and MotoGP. We need to discuss Moto E, our second career mode championship to do whilst we're playing MotoGP 23. Of course, on the precipice, on the cusp of saying farewell to MotoGP 23. 2nd of May 2024 is when MotoGP 24 will arrive to our platforms and I can guarantee from then on I will be doing nothing but grinding MotoGP 24 and I simply cannot wait. Be sure to let me know and get involved with the Discord server if you want to be part of the MotoGP 24 championships that we're going to be doing. We're doing the cups now in MotoGP 23. Oh, has Ferrari's gone down? Has he gone down into turn one or has he gone down into turn two? Well, wherever he went down, he didn't take anyone with him. So that's a good thing for the Grassini rider. But it has not helped his chances for this race. And I think that is probably curtains from anyone else. Unless Spinelli and Cassidy keep it together and they chase me down, maybe force me into a mistake. I simply can't see him raining on our parade today. The Le Mans Masterclass. The electric start. It's all happening now. Eddie Grant sang about the electric avenue. Matt Grant sings about the electric start in MotoGP 23's Moto E career mode. Fantastic. This is wonderful. I am very much enjoying this. I certainly hope you guys are as well. I know I read a couple of comments where people don't like Moto E, and for some reason there is a comment somewhere that uh, someone was saying it was very annoying, which I apologise for, but for some reason that vi that keeps getting flagged up as a uh, a blocked word. I don't know what is blocked about mad annoying, <laughs> but for some reason it just appears every single day and I, I simply don't know what to do with it. So if that comment's there, then I guess we're going to have a laugh about it, but if it's not, then uh, it's still stuck in that held for review section. Every now and again the strangest things come up for it to be held rev for review. If you've ever left a comment and, sit and then it's not been there anymore, probably that reason. Because sometimes they can be held for review either really quickly or it can take a few days. I had one a few days ago which was uh, a, a simple conversation between myself and some and one of the aces. And uh, he went quiet for a while and I didn't know why. We were having a good old conversation in the comment section. And it turned out 
his comment got flagged for something, but it never said what. It was sitting there held for review and it just didn't go anywhere. But I digress for now, because of course I'm still pushing to get that 139 or at least 138, but I can't see it happening now. That front soft tyre is looking a little bit worse for wear. The rear tyre is actually looking perfect. I'm really content with the way the soft tyre felt. It did recommend the medium, and I tried it in the practice, but not for me. I find that the medium and the hard just loses way too much time, so it's better just to go for the soft. Go for the soft and just try and balance it throughout the race. A little bit look behind us there to see what's going on. You could see Zanoni now up into the podium positions. He's joined Mikel Pons. One thing I will say is, apart from us leading this race quite comfortably, there's quite a lot of parody in Moto E. Riders like Zanoni, Pons, Cassidy, Spinelli, Garzo, Krumanaka, Granado, as you can see on screen right now. Ferrari, Torres, uh, Tulovic is in uh, Moto E this season. Chaz Davis will be in Moto E this year as well. There's a lot of riders who could win in Moto E. My teammate Tito Rabat and uh, I've forgotten the other rider, apologies, but uh, yeah, <laughs> we're all capable of winning. We could all get involved and do something in this season here in Moto E. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this is the final lap of today's video. Ooh, steady. A bit too eager on the apex into turn one or to turn two. Now we're three and four. Tackled pretty well, and this would now have us have a 3.5. Second advantage is Pons and Spinelli are changing positions every other second. There's something going on behind us. Zanoni's down to seventh. I, I really want to be a part of that battle next time, but at the same time, do I? I'm winning comfortably here for the first time since MotoGP 23's Assen race, possibly, or the Chang International Circuit in the KTM. It's been a while since we won a race this comfortably. Three point. Where did my three second advantage go? Well, it's, it's losing it now. Going tight to Garage Vert did not pay off, or going too wide. 2.2 is there with a gap to Pons. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm getting too hyped for nothing. Calm down again. Pons is nowhere near. Neither is Spinelli, neither is anyone else. Crazy to see how many times the riders behind us have changed for those podium positions. Early it was Cassidy and Spinelli. It was Granado. It was Torres. It was Ferrari. It's Pons. It's crazy. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are two corners removed from winning race two here in Le Mans on board the Moto E machine. And ladies and gentlemen, what a start. It is the electric start. It is the Le Mans masterclass. And it's a wheelie for all the Dr. Ace fans. So there you go then. Quite the comfortable victory. Oh, and an achievement. We won Le Mans for the very first time. I am pleased to see that. And they're down the order. Kevin Manfred did back of the grid. Oh, Matteo Ferrari actually did get a 138. The only riders to do it. Fair play. Quick look at the championship points. It's a perfect 50 for me. Two race wins. 225 points. Gives us a 14-point championship lead ahead of Nico Spinelli. Pons in third. And uh, teammate Rabat got us some points. But Luca Salvadori sadly did not. Team Championship, Spinelli and Cassidy leading the way by a single point ahead of me. And ladies and gentlemen, that is it. Because of course, the Constructors is only one thing. So guys, thank you very much for watching the video. Let's take a look at the podium celebration and then let's get out of here. Sergio, big thanks to him for making that helmet there. As you can see, beautiful colour design, very similar to the MotoGP 23 career mode one at the moment. But this is perfect. And this is the end. Of today's video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Ciao for now. Oh, hi. Didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Race content by clicking the video shown on screen now? Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Race video.